Good morning. So close to afternoon, I was going to say good afternoon. <clears throat> uh, the, the deacons and people helping today are going to hand out uh, some sign-in booklets and stuff. Um, I can't think of the name of it right now, so my mind's blank. But uh, uh, go ahead and fill out your name. Uh, you know, if you, if you want us to contact you, uh, put your phone number, email address. It's just a great way for us to, to feel who's in our church and uh, get an idea of who, who we need to get a hold of and stuff. Even if you just put, us, put a name there, then we can, next time we, you're here, we can put a face with a name. So, <clears throat> um, I feel really bad. I don't know if anybody here got to come early, but there was a beautiful rainbow over the church earlier today. So if you came late, sorry, we didn't hold it up there for you. So um, I, it, was, it was amazing. I've been bragging on God's handiwork all morning. So, <clears throat> all right. So I want you guys to imagine uh, you're anywhere from 14 to 16 years old. And we actually have some 14 to 16 year olds. So if you are that age, then this, this will be right where you're thinking. I know for some of you, it, it might have been a few years ago. I know for some of you, you ain't there yet. You know, I got kids seven and younger, so they're not there yet. So, <clears throat> but I want you to imagine that you're sitting at your house today. It's a beautiful Sunday. Um, we, all over the news, there's all kinds of stuff about ISIS. And, and just imagine you've heard some over in Canada and you're, and you're you're not too concerned about it. You're sitting in your house. You're thinking, man, God is going to protect me. I don't have to worry about it. <clears throat> and you're sitting there reading a book, talking with your family, and, and you're just having a great time. Then all of a sudden, boom, the door busts open. Somebody in a mask dives in, runs into your house holding an AK-47. I don't know why I said that, but it just sounded cool. But he, he's got a gun, gun to your face, and he's yelling, he's yelling words you've never heard before. It's a different language, and he grabs you and drags you, and he drags you across the border, and you, you're all confused. You have no idea what's going on, and because of your, your uh, birth and, and your good looking, you, you, get, you get favored, and you get separated from everybody else, <clears throat> and but because, they, because you're favored, they also want to give you their culture. They want you to start becoming like them. So they give you their food. They give you their, the, the drink they have. <clears throat> but the one thing you know is that, that these people, they worship somebody you, you do. You, they, all the stuff they bless to their God they, or the devil. So you're like, man, I, I just don't want to do that. And you're young, so you're, you're figuring out the, light, the world. <clears throat> The reason why I start with that is because when I was, I'll say 16, because that's how old I was, uh, I was at a Newberry football game. Newberry's not too far from here. <clears throat> and today we're talking about integrity, which is doing the right thing. No, my definition, not, it, there's probably a big long one, but doing the right thing no matter who's looking or no matter who's looking, or what the consequences are. So I'm at this football game, and I remember I went to go get something to drink, I think. I, I can't remember what exactly, and I had $10. Well, at 16 years old, I, I gave them a 10. They gave me change for a 20. Now, at the time, I wasn't like the character we're going to talk about today. I didn't have integrity. What I did was I was like, thank you very much. I walked away laughing. I was like, all right. I'm from Red Yard, so I said, man, those people from Newberry just don't know how to count. That's what I was thinking. I was pretty excited about it. Well, the character we're talking about today, who's a game changer, was Daniel. <clears throat> uh, I don't think, you, you guys, I'm going to read through some of the stories, and you tell me if he would have made that decision. <clears throat> so, so the whole story, what I started with, this is Daniel. So all that happens, and here's Daniel with that decision. In Daniel 1, I'm all over Daniel, so I didn't have notes. So if you're trying to follow, just be in Daniel and you'll catch up. So in Daniel 1, verse 8 through 9, but Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested the chief, the chief of Enix that he would not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into the favor and goodwill of the chief of the Enix. So, the, one of the, the big point, and I'm going to emphasize it later, is, is that you can start early to develop your integrity. 
I, I said this earlier, and I think it's a great point. We kind of give a grace period for kids from like 12 to 25. They're allowed to basically do whatever they want for, mo for most part. That's kind of the general consensus in our world today. And you're, but Daniel is a great example of somebody who said, no, let's start early because God can use you for more if you start early. And, and uh, I can't remember the book, and I said it earlier, but there's a great book uh, by some 16 and 18-year-olds talking about that, how um, there's a kid, he's, I think, 12 years old over in Canada feeding, I think, I, think, I can't remember how many thousands of people, because he realized that, no, I can make a difference young. And that's what I really like about Daniel. I showed you, I told you, I didn't, I wasn't like that. <clears throat> so Daniel makes that decision, um, and he makes that decision, and it also leads some of his friends to make that decision. They say, hey, if Daniel's doing it, I'm following. Because sometimes it just takes one person to step up to leadership and, and stand for something, and others will usually follow. <clears throat> so he stands up, says, nope, I'm not going to. He asks the, the chief Enoch, he says, hey, I, I'll, because the guy was worried, because here he just, you know, it's Nebuchadnezzar who, who dragged Daniel out of his country. Uh, you never know what's going to happen with a king because they can do whatever they want. <clears throat> and he, the Enoch's really worried, and he says, hey, Daniel says to him, for 10 days, just test us. We won't eat the food. We'll just eat vegetables and drink water. He says, okay, I'll, I'll try it. So after 10 days, he tests them, and they're actually more healthy than the other people who are eating the king's delicacies. So he says, okay. So after, I think it was three years, they had to do this. And then he went, they went in front of the king. And Daniel and his friends were, were so, they were ten times more knowledgeable than the magicians and satraps at the time. Now, I said this in first surf, and it's so true. I'm not saying today that if you have integrity, you're going to be ten times smarter than everybody you meet. I, I can't guarantee that's going to happen, but that, that's what happened there. <clears throat> So some time goes by, they've been promoted, um, and Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. And if, if, you, if you read the story, Nebuchadnezzar has this dream, but he knows over time, all his magicians and satraps, they never would tell him the truth. They would just tell him something to make him happy so that he would shower him with gifts and, and stuff like that. So the king says, he wakes up and says, all right, I'm not telling you my dream. I want you to tell me what it is. I read that and I was like, well, for all those liars and cheaters, guess what? They're in trouble because they just got found out. And I think that's what Nebuchadnezzar knew. <clears throat> because when you lie and have integrity, you always have to keep track of what you said. You have to have a great memory because you're going to be found out eventually, right? <clears throat> so Nebuchadnezzar has this dream. Um, nobody can figure it out. So in Daniel 2, verse 5, this is what the king says after this whole debacle with his magicians and satraps. He says, <clears throat> The king answered and said to the Sheldins, My decision is firm. If you do not make known the dream to me and its interpretation, you shall be cut into pieces, and your house shall be made an ash heap. And then in Daniel 2, verse 12 through 16, the first part here, For this reason the king was angry and very furious, and gave a command to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. So the decree went out, and they began killing the wise men, and they sought Daniel and his companions to kill them. <laughs> so I don't know about you, if I was in that position, and I just heard that came out, how many people would be a little scared? Yeah, thank you. I would be too. I'd be thinking, I don't want my house burnt. I don't want to be cut in pieces. Because back then, they didn't, they didn't like kill you. They would kill you, your kids, your wife. They, they killed everybody. They, if you did something wrong, you were accountable for your whole family. It was accountable for your sin. <clears throat> so, so Daniel hears this decree, and uh, the head Enoch comes to him, and, and because I, you know, it said earlier that he was in favor, so the Enoch liked Daniel, which how couldn't you like somebody who you knew at the age of 14, was already establishing himself as ha having integrity. So he was somebody you could count on. <clears throat> and it says in verse 14, Then with counsel and wisdom, Daniel answered a roach, the captain of the king's guard, who had gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to a roach, the king's captain, 
Why is this decree from the king so urgent? Then Arosh made the decision known to Daniel. So Daniel went in and asked the king to give him time that he might tell the king the interpretation. So back to you. you you've just been given this decree. You know, it, it says they already started killing some. The, the Arosh comes to you. you. You convince them to go talk to the king. And I, I don't know if it was like that with Nebuchadnezzar, but a lot of kings, you couldn't even get in to talk to them unless like you did something special. So you had to have a lot of, a lot of courage. And that's what, one of the things I, I know I didn't talk about the first half is how much courage Daniel had because he was, he was totally willing to do what was right no matter the cost. <clears throat> so, and the one thing that's amazing is, is he, he goes to the king, tells him, give him time, and what did he do? He did what I feel I should do more often. Um, he went and prayed. He said, all right, guys, here's the decree. We're, we're, if we don't get it right, we're dead. So he goes with his friends and they pray. And how many agree today that we should do that more often? I, I know I'm, I'm at fault. Like, <laughs> I'm at fault. I, sh- I should be praying more, whether it's, you know, uh, something that big or something small. <clears throat> so they, they go and pray. <clears throat> And he gets the answer. God gives him, in a, in, a, in a dream, God gives him the answer to his prayer, <clears throat> which I, I just think is so amazing. So he goes in front of the king, and he says in Daniel 2, verse 27 and 28, Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded, the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, and the soothsayers cannot declare the, to the king. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has made known to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, what will, ha- what, what will be in the later days. And what, I'm sure most of you have read the story, he, he tells them about future, future kingdoms. He, he gives a description of a statue and, and how the ki- king Nebuchadnezzar is at the top, and he's going to have a long life. <clears throat> and king Nebuchadnezzar says, yep, you're right. He promotes him. But the thing I find amazing of Daniel is not only did he pray, but he also gave credit where credit was due. I don't know how many times have you guys worked and worked and worked, and you, you've been in the background doing stuff, and you never get credit where credit is due. And I think that is actually, to me, is a part of integrity, is making sure you, especially when it comes to God, I really think you should, we should. I'm not saying you, we, because I'm part of that too. We should give credit where credit's due. And I made a comment about Olympians that I don't know if they, they, uh, they accredit God. And I was told most of them do, a lot of them do. So I, I stand corrected. But it, it's amazing when you, you have, uh, I use sports a lot because I like sports. So sorry if you don't like sports. <clears throat> so in Daniel 2, verse 37, he says to the king, You, O king, are a king of kings. For the God, has, God of heaven has given you kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. So he's, he's saying to the king, yep, I told you the interpretation. I told you where it came from. And he's, and he's telling him, hey, but do you know where it came from? That it came from God. And if you read s- s- more into the scripture, you know, Nebuchadnezzar says, says several times. But the thing is, I don't, if you re- we'll get into later, he doesn't really believe it. I think he wants to. I think he knows. That's why he said to the magicians, hey, you know, you need to tell me the dream. <clears throat> so my big question is, would you be able to? Would you be able to stand up? I don't know. Let's say uh, King, I think it's uh, King Kim Jong-un. That's the guy in North Korea, isn't it? The, I think that's his name. Uh, he, uh, oh, just the background of this guy, he, uh, one time a guy fell asleep in his meeting, and he said, hey, uh, he f- caught the guy, brought him out to a stadium and dropped a bomb on him. Would you be able to stand up to that guy and say where he, where he even got his kingdom from? Because that's kind of what Nebuchadnezzar was. He was, he was the king of Babylon. I mean, that's, that's a big place. Would, and I don't know if I'd be able to. But reading, reading history and reading people of faith who, who are game changers gives me courage to do that. And I hope it does for you too. Now, so some time passes... And Nebuchadnezzar has another dream. 
In this dream, he actually tells, at least Daniel, he tells the dream to. I, I, I don't remember if he said to the other people, but this is the first time Daniel's actually worried to tell the king. And it's not worried because he's not going to do the right thing. He's worried, you know, this guy might be a little unstable. You're not sure maybe what's going to happen. So he gets, he gets kind of worried to tell the king. But the thing is, Daniel tells him anyways, which is just, you know, tells the courage of him. Because <clears throat> integrity or courage is not acting, how's that go? I, courage is acting in spite of fear. Because you're going to have fear and doing the right thing, sometimes you're going to have, have fearful. Talking today, I, I can't say I wasn't nervous because I was. But I was excited and wanted to get here. And I did it because I, told, I said I would. There was a point when I, I, you know, it wasn't very long that I thought, you know, I could just not come today. But no, because, because I said, because I said I would be here. I wanted, I wanted to be here for you guys. So, so he's in Daniel 4, verse 19. Then Daniel, whose name was Belchazar, Teresa, I hope that's right, was astonished for a time, and his thoughts troubled him. So the king spoke and said to Belchazar, Do not let the dream or its interpretation trouble you. Belshazzar answered and said, My lord, may the dream concern those who hate you, and its interpretation concern your enemies. So he ends up telling him the dream that the king's going to go crazy. He's going to lose his whole kingdom because he's too prideful. And like I said, he, uh, Nebuchadnezzar says several times that God's the one who gave it to him. But he really doesn't believe it because that's, that's what Daniel's saying in his next dream. He gets told that, hey, you, you, because of your pride and that you will not say that God gave you your kingdom, you, he loses it. So he tells him the dream. And, and this is just another point where Daniel steps up with his integrity, and he says in 27, Therefore, O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by being righteous, and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be lengthening of your prosperity. So Daniel says, hey, you, you actually, it's going to happen, but maybe you, can, maybe you can prolong it. Maybe you can make it so, so God will wait a while. But... It says, I, I can't remember how much time it is. He's walking, the king Nebuchadnezzar is walking, and he's looking at, he's looking at his kingdom, and he says, wow, look how good I am. I'm, I'm awesome. And I think immediately, boom, he becomes crazy, and he starts living among the animals, and then he actually, and like, like Daniel says, he ends up actually getting his kingdom back. <clears throat> so the next part, we go to Belshazzar, his son, Becomes king. Um, his son also has the same problem as his father. He's very arrogant. Thinks that, and I said earlier, it's, a, it's, it's that, like, second, if you see second or third generation wealth, when people think of the, the, the bad rich, that's who they see. They see the people who have money, and they, they uh, show it off, but they didn't earn it. Their grandpa did. I, I said earlier, I don't think she's in the room, but Paris Hilton is a great example of somebody who's third fourth generation wealth, and says, hey, I'm awesome, look at me. No, you, your, your great grandpa did it. You didn't even do anything. And that's what Belshazzar does here. So when, when Daniel got taken from uh, Jerusalem, he, they took some of the cups from the temple. And if, from what I remember, the cups were in the, uh, the most holy, which only like one person could go to. You had to uh, do a lot of stuff just to get in there. You had to cleanse yourself, and it only, I think it was only once a year. <clears throat> so they take these cups, and Belshazzar says, Hey, we, do you remember that battle we did when I was five? <laughs> do you remember that battle that I won? Which he obviously didn't. Let's bring those cups in. We're having a party. And he's sitting there, and he looks over, and there's a hand. It, it doesn't say a full hand. It doesn't say a body. It says a hand on the wall writing something. He freaks out. He says, <laughs> he like, he gets stone, I think it says something like stone face, and he's freaking out. And he says, I need to find somebody. So he, he talks to all his magicians and satraps and all that, and they, they can't, they can't interpret it. <clears throat> and he, somebody, it says the queen, but I, I heard that that was actually his mom. So he screams mommy, which I think is, I mean, I'm not saying anything bad against moms, but it's just funny. Here's this big burly guy saying, 
hey, mom, come help me, you know. So it, it, they, his mom says, hey, there was a guy a long time ago that help, helped uh, Nebuchadnezzar. His name was Daniel. So here's Daniel. So Daniel comes, interprets for him, tells him that, hey, you're, you're, because, of, because you did not humble yourself, you're going to lose your kingdom just like your dad. And this is in uh, 22. But you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, although you knew all this. And what he knew is he was old enough to see his dad go crazy because he wouldn't humble himself. And he's he seen his, his dad lose his whole kingdom and then humble himself and get his kingdom back. <clears throat> And you have lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven. And it, so Bel, Belshazzar says, oh yeah, you get all this stuff. And Daniel's like, I don't want it. Just give it away. You, you're, I don't want any of your stuff. And then the next thing you know, Darius, uh, um, I think he was the Sheldons. I think that's what Darius was ahead of. He comes over and conquers them. And I was saying earlier, my kids have a, a Bible movie and they... Uh, when Darius comes and conquers, he, they tell him that Daniel told him that he was going to get conquered, and, and Darius laughs. Like, you knew I was coming. You knew I was going to be here and conquer you. And Belshazzar was so arrogant that he didn't even plan for it. He just figured, out yeah, whatever, it's, it's not going to happen. So Darius takes over, and right away, Darius sees something different about Daniel. And I think that's, that's another great point we can learn from Daniel is that even somebody who, who's evil is going to notice your integrity and be, an, and be impressed. So we read in Daniel 6, 1 through 5. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 130 satraps, or I'm sorry, 120 satraps, and to be over the whole kingdom, and over these three governors, of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give an account to them, so that the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to set in him over the whole realm. So the governors and satraps sought to find some charges against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not find charge or fault, because he was faithful, nor was there an error or fault found in him. These men said, We shall not find any charge against Daniel, unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. So, it's kind of a long passage, but um, so that's what I'm saying. When, when you have integrity, people out there are going to notice, and not that you're going to get promoted. To, you probably will, because if, if at your job you've been told to go do something, I, I, there was a great passage with, when Joseph with, with Potiphar, and I, I try to remember this every time I'm at my job or doing anything. It said that... Uh, Joseph was so good with Potiphar that he never checked on him ever again. He made him the head of his household, and he never checked on him ever again. He didn't have to check in because he knew Joseph was always going to do the right thing. <clears throat> and I hope in my life, and I hope in your life, somebody can say that about you. And the, uh, another point is, what we can learn from Daniel is that we shouldn't be surprised when somebody, of, when you have integrity and and people aren't going to like you for it. They're, they're actually going to try to trip you up. They're going to try to find a way uh, for you to get knocked down because I, I'm assuming it must make them feel better. And one of the great examples, because we're on a pedestal, and uh, I don't know if you guys know Tim Tebow. He was a kind of a college football, really big for Florida. Um, and he's, he's a very devout Christian, goes and does mission trips. Um, and... He, he's always said that he was a virgin. Well, there was actually a site created, and they, they want to, they'll pay somebody a million dollars if they can find out that he's not being pure. So, so even today, it doesn't have to be a star athlete. It could be you and me. We're on a pedestal, and people are looking at you saying, man, there's a person. They're, I know they're a Christian, and they're looking for you. They want to believe that you're who you say you are, but there, there is people looking out to trip you up. And I just want to let you know that because I really feel there was a time in my life where I didn't think that. I thought that, hey, everybody would be happy that I was, I was a good person, that I had integrity. <clears throat> so, so the last look we have here, so 
they said they wanted to find something against Daniel. So they knew that, hey, in normal things, we can't trip him up. So, hey, we're, we're going to make him choose God or king. So they came up with this, this amazing decree. They said, all right, King Darius, we, uh, we know how awesome you are. And I'll go back to the kid's story. It, it, they, they went to Darius and said, hey, you're like our God. You're, you, come on, nobody... You're, you're our God. Nobody should be able to worship anybody but you. And Darius, they, if you want to get somebody, stroke their ego, and that's exactly what they were doing. They were stroking Darius' ego and saying, hey, look how awesome you are. So he makes this decree for 30 days. You, you cannot worship anybody but King Darius. <clears throat> and, and if you don't, you get thrown into the lion's den. Now, right there... It, you know, going back to you being there, I, I don't know. That, that would be, that'd be amazing to, to, to know what you, you know, you can always be a Monday morning quarterback and say, yeah, I'd do that. But when you get tested, that's, that's probably one of the big lessons you learn from Daniel is that, and that's why I said start young, is that you're going to be tested and tested and tested and you can't, God will never give you more than you can handle. So, you better be good throughout so that when something big happens, you, when you get tested, you'll be okay. So, and what I like is, how, how many people know what Daniel did? Daniel, I, 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 read the, I never read this before, and I just laughed because it says, now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in my head, when I read that, I seen, I seen the guy finishing the decree and strike, strokes it, and he runs home. And what does he do? And in his upper room, with his windows open towards Jerusalem, so he opens his windows to let the whole world see what he's doing, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God and was, that was his custom since early days. So he had already been doing this. Like I said, he started early building his integrity and he knew what he, he was doing, what he always did, but he opens his window to let the whole world see. And I'm not sure, it doesn't say if he was, you know, testing them to see if that's what they were doing because it says right away he went and did it. And I was just amazed at that because he went right away to go and, and I put in my notes, I'm not sure if that was the fear of doing it because he wanted to hurry up and get home and do it right away because, hey, I don't, wanna, I don't want myself to trip up and do the wrong thing. <laughs> and... So the, the satraps or whatever, they, they hide in a corner. They see him up there, and they say, Oh, look, there's, Darius. There's, there's Daniel. He's doing what we thought he would. So they go to the king, and they say, King, there's something there. Uh, going back to the kid's story, I really like it because it was just a good depiction. But he goes, they, in that, it says, they go to Darius and say, Hey, there's somebody that's already breaking your decree. First day. And... and he's like, oh, I can't believe it. Oh, we're going to bring him to lion's den right now. Who is it? And they say, oh, it's that guy Daniel. <laughs> and he, he's like, oh my gosh, because can you imagine you actually have somebody you can trust? You have somebody you know if you say, hey, run 10 miles, they're going to run 10 miles and maybe 11 because they want to do what you said. And it says in, in Daniel 6 verse 14, and the king, when he had heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Because when I, when I read that and I thought about it, <clears throat> there's a great saying, and I, I got corrected, there's no honor among thieves. Because you, you know, like if you, you've read history or watched history on like mob and stuff like that, that's one of the biggest things they're concerned about is the guy behind them getting rid of them because they can't trust them because everybody wants to move up a spot. So if they take you out, guess what? They're moving up. And they, he actually had somebody in Daniel. He knew that wasn't going to happen. He knew he was going to do right by him every time. <clears throat> so, so you read it. So going on the story in, in 16 through 18. So the king gave the command and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, I, I kind of laugh at this because he says it, 
but he, I don't think he really means it because when he pulls him out of the tomb, he doesn't even believe what he said. Your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Well, we'll read later, or I'll tell you, later when he pulls him out, he, he asks, hey, did your God save you? Because he, he, he wanted to believe, but he, he wasn't sure. <clears throat> so it says, then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting, and no magicians were brought before him. Also his sleep went from him. And I, and I think what, I, there's a great saying, it's, it's uh, people of integrity expect to be to believe, and when they're not, they let time prove them right. And King Darius wanted to believe that he, his God would save him, but yet he puts a signet ring to seal it. If you remember in the story of Jesus in the tomb, they had guards out there to make sure that they didn't get out. You know, there, there's so much disbelief. <clears throat> so, so when the tomb's open, he goes and, and back to that. I'm sorry, I, I have kids, so that's why I always relate to little kid movies. But they, they roll open the tomb and he yells down into the tomb. Daniel, are you alive? Daniel goes, yes, I am. My Lord, he, he, he says something about uh, King Darius, and then he says, the God, my God saved me because I, I had no fault against you or anybody else. So he proved his integrity. Now, when, when you prove your integrity, um, this, I didn't add this verse originally, but I really like this because it proves a great point. It says in group, in verse 24, and the give... The king gave the command, and they brought those men who had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of the lions. Them, their children, and their wives, and the lions overpowered them, and they broke all their bones in pieces before they ever came to the bottom of the den. And why I like that is, is if you, have, if you don't have integrity, when you get found out, you're going to be thrown to the lions. I, it's you look time and time and time again, the people that had, you know, they, were ama- they had amazing careers. They, they, you know, they might have even done something great for God. But if something gets found out, they don't have integrity, guess what happens? They get, they get ousted that fast. Because there's something in our culture today, and I've talked to several people, whether it's sports or um, just life in general. Uh, one of the things that boggles my mind is that... Uh, You'll have men bragging about all, all the females they're with all the time, but then, and they're married, and then they get found out, and that whole group who was sitting around with them call that person all these kinds of names of how bad a husband they are, how bad of a uh, dad they are. But wait, two seconds ago, you guys were saying that okay, and that's kind of our culture today is that it's okay to break rules and cheat as long as you don't get found out, but the thing is, you will be thrown to the lions, and, and I'm not, you know... I'm not yelling at you as much as I'm yelling at myself because the moment I break my integrity, there's a lot that stands on me and I will be thrown to the lions, especially if you're a Christian because the, the, the people who hate you want you to fall apart and we talked about that. <clears throat> so so for, for everybody to be a game changer, and this is my sales speech today and I, sold, I don't, I'm not sure I sold any at the end of the last service, but I'm hoping at the end of service you all rush to Walmart and get this amazing product today. It's fantastic because I, I want everybody here to be, become game changers because um, there, there's two things that, are, that will help you. <clears throat> the first thing is a Bible because a lot today people talk about integrity, they talk about morals and all that stuff, but most of the time it's your opinion. Well, if... if it's your opinion when somebody shoots up a theater or does something crazy. Can you argue? Can we argue it's wrong? If you don't have anything to base it on? I don't think you can. That's why I say if you want to learn integrity, grab a Bible. Now, this is, this is, this is my revolutionary product. It's only five bucks at Walmart. I'm telling you, it's going to help you build your integrity. Now, it's amazing, so... Don't go against the, how awesome it is, okay? It's called a mirror. You know why? Because I, you have to, if you, wanna, if you want others to have integrity, 
Because everybody wants to change the world, but nobody wants to look at themselves. There's a, there's a great poem that says, when I was young, I wanted to change the whole world. And I found out it wasn't possible. So I, want, so I said, hey, I'm going to direct my attention. I'm in my 20s, 30s. I'm going I'm to change my nation. So I go to change my nation, and it doesn't happen. So I say, hey, you know what? I'm going to change my town. I'll change my town. At least I can do that. He's in his 50s, 60s. doesn't happen. Later days, you know, he's 70, 80. I'm going to change my family. And he finds out, nope, they, they would have none of it. And on his deathbed, he says, you know what? If I would have started with myself. If I would have started with myself... I could have maybe changed my family. I could have influenced them enough to change my family. Maybe that would have changed my, my, my county, my state, and then it could have changed my nation, and maybe it could have changed the country. <clears throat> and that's... I, the reason why I say it starts with you is <clears throat> how many people have ever gotten the, the weight loss bug? You want to lose weight? So you say, next Monday, I'm going to start working out. So Monday comes... You don't work out. What does that do to yourself? You, you, you start, it, it hurts you. And because it hurts you, you reflect that to others. <clears throat> and you could take anything. But I think it starts with personal integrity, whether it's uh, working out. It could be uh, uh, showing up on time. It could be uh, you tell somebody you're going to go do something. Do you do it? I, I actually want to be a, I want everybody here if you're with me, to be a boring person. I know it's funny. I want you to be so boring that people go, yeah, I know, I know Kevin's going to do that. I don't have to ask. I know Bob is. I, 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 want, I want all of you to be boring people that you don't have, when you think about that person, you're like, five o'clock, I wonder what that guy's doing. It's happy hour. But I bet you they're not there. I bet you they're doing something with their family. I bet you, I want, I, that's how, that's, I want, I, I, I didn't say this earlier, I want all you guys to be like that with me because I want to be a boring person that so nobody ever has to question, you know, are, are they doing the wrong thing? Are, you know they're going to do the right thing. So the six takeaways from today, I already talked about one, is start early. If, if you're well advanced in age, start now. If you're my age, start now. The reason why I say that is because God can use you for more if you start early and imagine all the people. I mean, I think about my kids. I want my kids to, to see my integrity and they go, man, I know dad. He's going to do the right thing. And I hope, I hope you do that. And if, if you've lived a bad life and you're not like that, like I said, start today. Start today. Second point is surround yourself with others who have integrity. <clears throat> and I didn't, read, I didn't talk about it, but in Daniel 3, you read about uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They actually, they actually had great integrity too. They, they went into a pit of fire and actually told the king, hey, if we die, that's fine. We're not going to... They, they, the king made a decree to, to worship a statue, and he said, no, we're going to throw, throw me in the fire. So surround yourself with the integrity because that will help you with your integrity. Number three, stay away from or spend little time with people who don't have integrity. And I, when I wrote that, I thought, people might think that's different, but there's a great saying, and my mom was here earlier, and I'm not sure my mom said it, but I've always heard the saying, if you hang out with bank robbers, you just might drive the getaway car. And isn't it so true? I, I, I'll admit, when I first started working in corrections, uh, uh, I'm a correction officer, prison guard, what have you, uh, I picked up a very bad habit of hanging out with people who swear a lot. And my grandma, God bless her, she's one of the best saints I've ever known. I almost dropped an F-bomb at her house. And I said, J.D., it's time to change. Because you don't do that. My grandma's like, you say, you say crap and it's a bad word. Like, you don't, you know what I mean? Like, you ever have somebody in your life like that? So that's why I say, don't, you know, spend less time with them. Number four, stand for your beliefs and others will respect you for it. And they, they also will follow, because if you read earlier in Daniel, they, because he had integrity and stood for it, others followed and said, hey, I'm going to follow him. They had a little bit of courage. They knew what was right, but they had to have one person stand up. And that's what I'm asking, even myself today, stand up so others will follow. <clears throat> and 
A great example of that is when I was a kid, like I said, I told you the story of being a Newberry, but I, I made a decision. There were certain things. I, I did some dumb things when I was a kid, but one thing I said is I'll never smoke dope. I know that's, that, that's just the one that came to me. I said, I won't do it. And I had somebody say, ah, oh, come on, buddy. It's okay. Come on. And I said, no, I'm, I'm not. I made a decision. I'm not going to. And he, he pestered me like two more times. And, and it was actually funny because the third time he knew I wasn't going to, he dropped his head and said, man, that's awesome. And I think it was because he knew he was wrong and he wanted me to join in so he felt good about it. But he, he respected me. And that's, that's one thing I want you to take away today is that you will be respected. But the other caveat, if that's the right word, I like big words, so hopefully that works. <clears throat> you have others who hate you. We talked about that. You're going to have others who hate your guts. You know, if, you, if you're a Hillary Clinton fan, you're going to have people who hate you for it. If you're a Donald Trump fan, you're going to have people who hate you for it. If you stand for, uh, you know, raising great kids, you're going to have people who, who hate you for raising great kids. And I, and, and I said this earlier, I, I actually think I had a lollipop thing of life because I thought, hey, man, if I have integrity, people are going to like me. And nope, you're actually going to have people hate you for it. And the last point, number six, be willing to stand for your integrity and tell the truth, even to the death. <clears throat> and I think as Christians, I mean, we're, we're really promoted. That's, not, that's how we live our life, and that's how you should live your life. And I'll admit it, there was one time in my life, I mean, I've, I've grown from them. There was a time in my life when I definitely couldn't have said that. <clears throat> how many people remember the, the Columbine shooting? That was kind of a horrific thing. It set a, set a path of more school shootings. Well, there was one, one interesting thing, and, and not that I think it's cool this happened. I think, I think it's cool the courage of these teenagers because when, when the gunman went around and he pointed the gun at people, you know what he asked them? I just find it weird that, that it interests them. They asked them this question, are you Christian? And there was a time in my life where I would have, I actually, my mom was here earlier and I, I never asked her, but I'm pretty sure she knows the story. I said, oh, no, I wouldn't say that. I'd hit the gun out of his hand and beat him with it, and I'd save everybody. But you know why I said that? Because I didn't have the courage. I, I didn't have the courage to do that. I didn't have the courage to say, yeah, go ahead. And that's what's amazing about Daniel. That's what's amazing about the people in Columbine is they had the courage. And later in my life, um, I... I I kind of laugh because <clears throat> I wasn't a Christian at that time. I knew what it was, and I, I knew I was going to be saved. I don't know how you can know you're going to be saved, cause, but I knew it. And, and I told my wife all the time, I said, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it, but just not today. <laughs> and I think I justified it as, is I like my sin, so I, I don't want to stop this sinning lifestyle, so I don't want to do it. And, and my silly brother... He kept bugging me. He kept bugging me all the time. J.D., are you saved yet? No. Are you saved yet? No. And I got so annoyed, I said, no, I'm not. Then one day I, I thought about it, and I said, why not? Why am I waiting? Why am I waiting for God's grace to come into my life and give, give me the honor to be in his family? Because today... If, if, if you want to scare yourself and, and say, hey, I need to be saved, go read Revelations for a little bit and see what the other side's like. It ain't pretty. And I'm so happy I made that decision. I hope today, you know, maybe somewhere down the road, uh, you make that decision because guess what? You're not going to be there. I've, I've had people say, hey, good, good people go to heaven, right? Nope, actually they don't. Good and bad go to hell. If you don't make the decision to give yourself to Christ, you're not going. And I hope today, whether you do it silently, whether you come to one of the deacons or come to me, you say, hey, I'm ready. Because guess what? You, I want you to be there. God wants you to be there. So let's, let's pray real quick. I didn't pray earlier. I was kind of mad at myself. So I'm going to pray this time. So let's pray. <clears throat> and then we'll sing a song. Dear Heavenly Father, we just pray and thank you so much for today. And uh, I thank you for the open eyes and open ears to hear a sermon today. And I hope I did my best to, to help somebody here. And I hope that 
we can all take this message and go make a difference in this life and show people that we are people of integrity and that we will follow your word and we will look to you when trouble comes along and that we will stand for what we believe and give other people courage to do the same. I pray all these things in your glorious name. Amen.